This is Savile Row in London. This is where James Bond gets his suits tailored. And if James Bond gets his suits tailored at Savile Row, then Andy Teach should get his suits tailored at Savile Row. Savile Row in London, England produces some of the finest tailor-made suits in the world. As a former Hollywood studio executive, I used to wear suits all the time, so I had a genuine interest in coming here. However, the two main reasons I came here was because of Savile Row's connection to James Bond and the Beatles. In the first James Bond film, Dr. No, when James Bond, played by Sean Connery, was asked where he gets his suits, he replies, my tailor, Savile Row. In reality, none of the James Bond actors got their suits from Savile Row itself, but from the area around Savile Row. However, many of the suits were patterned after the style of Savile Row suits. Now, before we talk about the Beatles connection, here's some interesting history about Savile Row. Originally named Savile Street, it was built between 1731 and 1735 as part of the development of the Burlington Estate. Initially, the street was occupied mainly by military officers and their wives. Taylor started doing business in the area in the late 18th century, then by 1803 in Savile Row itself. In 1846, Henry Poole, later credited as the creator of the dinner jacket or tuxedo, opened an entrance to Savile Row from his tailoring premises in Old Burlington Street. Founded in 1849 by Henry Huntsman, H. Huntsman and Sons moved to Savile Row with the ending of World War I in 1919. During the First World War, Huntsman's was a tailor to the military, producing dress uniforms for British officers throughout the conflict. Huntsman's heritage is as an equestrian tailor, making hunting and riding clothes for European aristocracy. Huntsman also does a particularly strong line in tweed, with particular emphasis on a padded shoulder and a one-button jacket. Dating back to 1865, Deegan Skinner is notable for being one of the few houses left on Savile Row to be family owned. Deeg is equally known for civilian clothing as it is for its military uniforms with a style that is a solid British military cut. It is also the only house on the road to have its own shirt cutting facility on site. Chittleborough and Morgan at Nutters was born out of Nutters of Savile Row. In 1969, Nutters of Savile Row, led by Tommy Nutter, modernize the style and approach of traditional Savile Row tailoring. Nutter dressed Mick Jagger and Elton John, and Beatles John Paul and Ringo wore Tommy Nutter suits in the famous Abbey Road album cover. This modernization continued in the 1990s with a new bespoke movement. The term bespoke is understood to have originated in Savile Row and came to mean a suit cut and made by hand. Usually a bespoke suit will take three or four appointments with each separated by a few weeks. Oh, and a bespoke suit can cost between four to 10,000 pounds, so I think I'll just stick to window shopping. In terms of style, Savile Row suits tend to be harder and sharper than tailoring made elsewhere. They use more shoulder padding and canvas and prioritize straight angular lines. There are three different cuts, traditional, drape, and exaggerated. Now for the other Beatles connection. On January 30th, 1969, the Beatles played a surprise concert on the roof of their Apple Record Company headquarters. This famous rooftop concert was performed at 3 Savile Row. They played songs from the Let It Be album before the police shut down the performance, and John Lennon famously said at the end of the concert, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the group and ourselves, and I hope we've passed the audition. I show you some close-ups of the building, but I made a big rookie mistake. I was so interested to see all the men's suit shops that I totally forgot to check out 3 Savile Row, and I'm a Beatles fanatic. Fortunately, I was able to take a great Beatles tour in London, so that was some consolation. 